for fluid things, um, like the um, actual um, which one does which. So like, it'll make more sense in a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to go fast right now. Mm, look at that guy right there. He doesn't know it's coming. He's just streaming, having a great time, super elated that the game he's been waiting for for so long is finally here. He can share it with people. He no longer has to hold his tongue and guard his words. He can just say stuff, but little does he know it's coming. It's real going. Do we want that yet, actually? Uh, let's do military just in case we get a visit. And that's when both the power and the internet went out. Oh, it's going to be one of those days. That's why I'm recording right now. We're making the best of this. Like, literally, this has just happened. The the me that I'm talking about, yeah, that's that's me like, you know, 20 minutes ago. So we're just, you know, we're going to make a video. Let's make a video. Hey, guys, check it out. There's been a whole lot of updates to the logistics. Some of these changes I covered in the circuits video. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But for completion and to expand on an example, I'll mention it here. One of my favorite changes is something called logistics groups. I have here a requester chest. You'll notice it's not actually requesting anything here. But I also have this, which is a constant combinator that has three different sections to it. I've got a wall core defenses logistics group. I've got a wall bullet defenses group and a wall logistics group. What's really interesting is that these three groups are available everywhere. So for example, I could make another combinator. If I click on this, you'll see it says no group assigned. That's because right now this has no group. If I were to assign things to it, like landfill, for example, it'll show up here and nowhere else. However, if I want, I can click on this and either give it a name and save it, or I can select some of the ones that I've already saved, like bullet wall defenses, core defenses, or logistics. Let's go ahead and do bullet defenses. And there we go. Now we have this. Do note that whatever you had before is lost. If I go to no group assigned, it's gonna be lost. I was gonna stay with whatever it had a second ago. So do bear that in mind. These are destructive changes you're making here. Let's go back to bullet defenses. What's also interesting is that if I make an update here, it'll be reflected here. To show you that, I'll go here. Let's say I just set up uranium bullets. Give 200. And there we go. Now, if I go back to the other one, you'll see it's updated here too. Pretty cool. You can also reorder these things just by clicking on these pieces here. You can add sections and have something very specific to this individual combinator, or of course, make a new group. You can get rid of these things here. And if you choose, you can also get rid of the groups here. You'll also notice a couple of things here. This number two means I have two combinators with this. So if I make a third one, now it's a number three. You'll also notice there's a history here. If you mouse over and hover, you'll see it says Galdok changed the request of 200 piercing rounds to 200 uranium rounds. You can also see all the different things that I've done to these, which is a lot, actually. I don't know how far back this history goes, but, you know, any history at all is cool. All right, so let's pick these up. Now, here's where this becomes interesting. If I want, I can press Alt-G and get a free wire and connect these two together like so. And now, if I go to Set Requests, you'll notice that I'm getting requests from the circuit network. You can, of course, add a section and put something specific to this chest if you like, but that's entirely up to you. Let's say I'm setting up outposts next to walls. I can set up combinators to drive the requests of the requester chests at outposts, and then I can come in here and stack only what I have. So if I have an outpost that doesn't have any bullet defenses, we can just get rid of that. Also notice, if I add a section and I click on this, even if there are no users of a particular group, it'll still stay in the list. Now let's say I have a particularly large section of wall. This particular section has 20 laser turrets and 30 flamethrower turrets, or basically double whatever the blueprint was that guided this. Well, I can go into here, and I can set this to a times two multiplier. Now, you won't notice the numbers here change. That's because this is the core group, and you wouldn't expect it to change. This is going to change from combinator to combinator, or in this case, from section of defenses to section of defenses. What you will notice though, is that now that I have it set up here, if you look over at the tooltip, I'm now requesting 20 laser turrets as opposed to the 10 that are listed here. I have 20 being sent as a circuit signal here, and if I click on the chest, you'll notice I have 20 being listed here. Also, do note that we can turn requester chests on and off by some sort of circuit condition, whatever you hand it. There's also a few quality of life changes in how this is done. Let's say I want to create a new row. I simply click on the last element here. Let's say I want to put in blue inserters. 10, hit enter. There we go, and now it'll make a new row because this slot is filled. What I can do now is I can actually click and drag.
and bring it over here. This is a lot more permissive, and I'm telling you, when you use this, you're going to be like, how did I ever live without this stuff? This can also be used to set on-the-fly requests. Let's say I have a train that stopped. I go into map view. I zoom in on the train. Maybe it's very far away. I know it's not in this example, but still, it could be that way. I click on the train. I go to the fuel tab, and I go to the fuel I want to put in there. You'll notice it's now requesting a stack. The fact that the 50 is up here means that there are 50 items being requested for this slot. So if for some reason I wanted to do this curse thing, I could. Do note, however, I've only been able to get this to request full stacks. Not sure why that is. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. You can also see that there are some new icons showing the requests themselves. This means that there is some job that needs to be done here that is specific to this particular thing. You can also see this if you use the upgrade planner. I've got a piece of yellow belt here. This will upgrade it to red belt. You can see I have another request being set here. Personally, I like this UI better than what they had before. You'll also notice the belt didn't stop. It's still going, even though there's an active request going on for it. The next big update is logistics search. This is outstanding. Let's say you're hungry, so you want to get your fish out of the chest. So I'm going to go into the map. I'll hit L. You could just hit L in the first place, but whatever. And you can see I've got a logistics network here. You can also see I've got a list of those logistics networks. So if I had separate ones, they'd all be listed here. And I can also see what's in those logistics networks by looking at the tab here. You can look at the members. That'll show you what actually is in this thing. But let's say I wanted to get that fish. And yeah, I can see it on the list here, but I don't quite know where it is in the world. If I hit Control F, I can say fish. I can now click on the fish here. And you can see it's showing up on this chest here. This shows you where on the map the thing is, and that is absolutely amazing, especially if you have a big network with all sorts of stuff in it. And it looks like my power just came back on. Do I have internet? I wonder. Another fun detail is now we can set things to trash unrequested. That means if I click here and I put something in this chest, it's going to immediately go to the trash section. And as usual, a bot will come and pick this up and throw it in a storage chest, or maybe a buffer, depending on how you have it set up. You can also have this request from buffer chests, which is really cool. Here's another fun little detail. If I go ahead and throw some stuff in here, I can now set these to be picked up by bots automatically from afar without using trash unrequested. I can't do that from this interface. Instead, I have to get out of here, go to the map, zoom in, click on it, and now if I right click, it'll set it to deconstruct, which is to say be picked up by a bot. You'll also notice it's showing up an alert here saying there's not enough logistics network storage space available. Um, yeah, that's because this is just a demonstration. So, yep. The alert system is also new, however, and I'll be covering that in more detail in a future video, but it's really cool. Anyways, this works on more than just this. I can also set up a machine. This also works with modules in a machine. So I can go into map view, zoom in, click on the machine. And if I right click on this, a bot will come and take it out. You can even put in modules. This sort of thing is very handy if you're working from a distance. As a bonus tip, speaking of searches, if I go into the map view, I can now do a search of the map. So if I hit control F and I say copper, you can see I now have a copper ore patch showing up and how much is in it. This is huge. I can also find assembling machines that are doing stuff. So for example, if I say bulk inserter, I can now see I have a manufacturing area over here where I'm making one of them. Also, side note, this is no longer a stack inserter. It's now a bulk inserter. There's various reasons for that, but suffice it to say that, well, there it is. Hey, the internet's back. The last detail I'll share before I close out the video is that both logistics and construction bots behave more efficiently now. Mostly this will be transparent to the user, but improved efficiency is always a good thing to have. It has been quite a day. It is currently midnight and I have been editing all day on top of streaming. Don't know how long I can keep this pace up, but you know, let's find out. Anyways, if you want to help support me in making this content, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. I've got a link to my Discord in the description below. And if you want to come see me stream, I've got a link in the description below for that too. Anyway, with that said, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.